beautiful Komatsusi. When hearing that name, I think about those big industrial machines, but upon arriving and being granted an opportunity to collaborate with the staff of Ishikawa Prefecture and Komatsu City, I was keen to hear what this place has an offer for everyone who is watching to come. Nestled by the Great Plains of the Hakusang Mountain Ranges, this beautiful small town packs a lot of culture and is easily accessible from the prefecture's capital of Kanazawa, to which we've already provided guides for. So, if you're looking for places outside the typical Gordon route of Tokyo or Osaka, look no further, we have you covered. Whether you come here by car, plane or train, this awesome city has all three direct access routes, so any holders of the JR Rail Pass could easily take advantage of the unlimited usage of the bullet trains, or you come here by plane instead, directly to Komatsu Airport. So, what are we waiting for? Watch and find out what is waiting for you at this humble city. And what you're bearing witness to right now, ladies and gentlemen, is um, it's a production machinery that you can have a look through the glass right in this museum. Now, one thing to also note about Komatsu stone, because of the air pockets uh, that are found within the stone, it makes it much more malleable for it to be molded into the shapes that we can probably see from the background. Because of the natural stone, um, that's found in Komatsu. Komatsu easily became the center of Katani production. Surabu Katani is one of the places that's been revamped from a 60-year-old clay factory and is pretty much one of the few handfuls that still exist right to this day. The, the reason why I'm going to Apron is because Surabu Katani not only has an art museum in which you can bear witness to the clay production facilities right behind us, but um, they can also participate in a clay workshop production with my sensei over here who's, who's going to assist me for today's workshop. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm putting the Apron right. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think all this social distancing and... I think, I think you guys would be able to relate to this. I mean, social distancing and staying at home has kind of made me put on five kilograms of sexy. <laughs> five kilograms of sexy. Oh. In other words, I'm fat. <laughs> Let's get straight into the workshop, shall we? Hi. This is the ceramic. Oh, okay, okay. It's a little bit soft. It's a little bit soft. It's a little bit soft. Wow, okay, okay, okay. The te it's, it's smooth. <laughs> it's very, very smooth. In fact, I'm doing this and it reminds me of the movie The Ghost of the scene from Demi Moore. <laughs> yeah, um, this is very, very smooth. Yeah, cool. <laughs> oh. Ah, <laughs> Okay, so, Okay, three. So, so we're trying to make the tip of the vase of the cup right now. So, koko kara, and then sugoshi zitsu, ue ni. Ah, so, ah, I learned a new point. So we use this hand to like, to maintain this, maintain the circle, ne? and use and you use the two fingers to make it a little bit thin. Wow. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> the number one important thing to remember when you do this workshop is to make sure you ha keep your hands clean. Oh, not clean, but wet as possible. Mm. So, Thomas. Next step. <laughs> Good. Wow. I'm so proud. Uh, this is such, this is a crowning moment. This is oh my god, the sensei approves. Sensei approves. Oh, um, this is the sensei. Wow, so good. Now, it's done. It's done. So, you're good. I'm going to do it. 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 I'm going to it's interesting to see the shape of the matcha ball being formed in front of my eyes because usually, especially when you're a tourist in Japan, you see the final product. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, okay. ah, you know, you see the final product, but you don't, but you don't have many chances to make this. So it's. Mm, I wanted to this. Kabuki is a traditional form of Japanese theatre that began in the 17th century as a form of popular culture for the masses. Known for its dramatic poses and plots, as well as lavish costumes and makeup, it has been inscribed in UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage List. 
while actors are usually men, Komatsu's children Kabuki are unique in being performed by young girls instead. <laughs> Wait, what? Girls? Yeah, that's right. Traditionally, all Kabuki shows had male actors, so those exquisitely decorated and lavishly androgynous of what we assume are females in those shows are, to most shows, indeed males. So there's a nice twist to see bunny women and young girls have a chance exemplifying this art. The best way to learn about Komatsu's rich kabuki culture is to attend one of their kabuki festivals in May. But if you can't, Miyosa is the next best place. A gallery that conveys scenes of the kabuki festivals through videos and rotating exhibits. The highlight are the majestically displayed hikiyama floats. Iconic of the Otabi festival where they are used as stages for their children's kabuki plays, they're usually only bought out by storage during the festival season. However, two of them are especially exhibited all year round in Miyosa. A rare chance to admire the superior and sophisticated workmanship and exquisite forms really up close. the Takigahara craft and say with Ikemen Ryosan! Yeah! He's the manager of this. This place really. Um, Takigahara Cafe sources all of their um, vegetables from this farm. And don't worry, for those people who are watching this right now, remember, this place is foreigner and English friendly. So if you ever find the need to go to Komatsu, or you're about to board your flight the next day and you're wanting to just check out the local area and not be too fussed about the language barrier, whether you can speak Japanese or English. You have Ikemen Ryosan who's able to speak English. Umai, umai ego, better, better ego, the Ryosan got. So you don't have to worry. This is the place to be. Oh my god! Ah! The neighbor in front of the cafe, right. the oldest lady, right, was right. taking the land, but uh, she couldn't continue anymore. Ah. So I like, gonna, yes. took my baton to the next region. Ah. Wow, it's so beautiful. Yeah, this land is the most beautiful like, uh, landscape. あ、ずっとずっとの小松、小松市で、あの、育ちましたか。よいしょ。違う、新潟で育った。あ、新潟。新潟。新潟。はい。ここには5年前に来ました。ああ、5年前。あ、私見たいです。ビザ最後から来
and welcome everyone to the place called Natadera Temple, which is approximately 30 minutes away from from Komatsu Station itself. Now, this day, this temple is quite a revered temple in the city of Komatsu because it was built 1,300 years ago by a great monk named Taicho. Now, the main precipice as to why this temple was built is because Taicho was actually a great believer in the harmonious beliefs of both nature and God. So that's why if you walk through this particular temple ground, you'll see that there are many, many things, including a great balance between both gardens as well as buildings. One interesting fact about this, um, about this area as well is that it used to be called the Iwaya Dera. The Iwaya Dera. The reason being is because the original canon was enshrined in the Iwaya Caves. However, in the year 986, the retired emperor known as Emperor Kazan then named this complex Nata Dera. Right now, we'll be showing you a stone formation. Uh, the reason why it's quite enshrined in this particular ground is mainly because it encapsulates um, and epitomizes the, the whole concept of the relationship between gods, nature, and humans. So, check it out. This over here is the main hall of Natadera. The main hall itself is inbuilt right into the natural caves. One thing to know about Japanese culture is that entering a cave is known as another rebirth or another process of rebirth because caves in Japanese culture are seen as a mother's womb. So naturally speaking, if you think about it carefully, re-entering a cave means you're going to be, um, you're, you're going through the process of rebirthing yourself into a new life. This is one of the main attractions that you find at Natadera Temple. You can just imagine the amount of trees and fauna um, just located just by the cliffside. But most importantly, Komatsu or this the Natadera grounds in Komatsu are very, very famous for its autumn viewing spots. When you get past the caves, you reach the three-story pagoda and then you get an access towards the observatory tower where if you look at this place in autumn, you can imagine the trees browning as a result of the season. Absolutely beautiful when you come here indeed. Before you know it, that finishes a sample guide of the amazing things waiting for you at Komatsu. It's always known that you find the most in-depth treasures in places outside the typical guides, and thus, I would highly encourage you all to visit Komatsu when you can. This list is non-exhaustive, and though I'd like to show you more, time also ran out for me to explore this place, but you bet I am planning my next trip when I can. Thank you for your continued support, Global Citizens. Until next episode, I wish you, your family, and your loved ones safe passage throughout this year, and may you all continue to prosper. My name is Marvin. Catch you all later. Bye.